Seahawks just lost to the Rams. Bummer! Unless you're a Rams fan. I am driving right now and thinking about ENFJs. ENFJs have a super worldly force lurking inside every one of them. When ENFJs use their powers, their tremendous powers, for good, they can carry the world. Truly, ENFJs can carry the world. They are mini atlases. They can inspire, they can motivate, they can bring out the best, and do so authentically and sincerely. And really, really want the best of those around them, be that their friends, their family, their students, because ENFJs are the teacher, and they make phenomenal, phenomenal teachers. An ENFJ in an unhealthy place scares me more than any other personality type, hands down. Because when an ENFJ is using their powers for bad, they have the greatest potential to inflict interpersonal damage than any anyone. And that's what scares the shit out of me. It's not a destruction based on any kinds of visible methods. It's the power of the tongue. And when ENFJs are choosing to use their words to harm, then they can cause a grievous and massive harm. It's like there was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. When she was good, she was very, very good, but when she was bad, she was horrid. And it's crazy because when they choose to use their powers for good, they can do good that seems, it literally seems superhuman. This type is more superhuman to me, uh, whether using powers for good or evil, than any type I've ever seen. And it comes down usually to the, the health of the ENFJ at the time. And their health depends on their sense of identity. So if they are in a place where they are feeling fully in themselves, they have a purpose in life, which is usually helping other people, hopefully, because that's what they're the best at. They have a vocation, you know, whether that is um, a job, a volunteering. They can be excellent writers. They can be artists. They are so funny. Um, they're quick. They're empathetic. And ENFJ is naturally good at bringing out the best in anyone. The teaching is perfect for ENFJ. They're so good at it and they have people that will give them that feedback which reaffirms their sense of identity. I don't think ENFJs should ever be stay-at-home moms with only a small community around them because they are the type to be helping in a, a huge community all the time. That's when they're happiest. And if ENFJs, you haven't tried doing that yet, then go try to do it and see how much happier you get. Because ENFJs can help so many people, teach so many people, they have like this crazy amount of energy. It's insane, I don't know where it comes from. The danger of that as well is that they will put themselves into overdrive and completely exhaust themselves and not even recognize it. And also if their ante goes up too high, they won't, they'll have a hard time resetting, you know, recalibrating to what a normal level is. And they have a really hard time, I think, doing things for themselves taking time out for themselves, pampering themselves, letting themselves deserve a break. ENFJs have the greatest potential, uh, the greatest potential for good. And if they're in an unhealthy place, the greatest potential for damage. And an ENFJ in an unhealthy place is usually one who, whose identity feels threatened in some way. But there's something about an ENFJ that at the very core their identity 
it, it can get a little shaky if they don't monitor themselves, if they don't make sure to do the things that they're good at. If something happens that threatens their sense of identity and they go into a bad place, their words become barbs loaded with poison. And they can be either aimed directly at you, but usually it's not in a direct manner. An ENFJ who is insulting you is going to act like they're joking or act like it's a compliment or it's going to be kind of like this. You know, it's going to come and zing you from the side rather than straight in your chest or it's going to hit you in the middle of your back. ENFJ and ENTP can have a blast together. They're both really creative and they both think abstractly and they both use abstract language so they can follow each other's thoughts without having to fill in the gaps. Especially, you know, in the more fanciful, made up imagination. They can kind of keep going and they can crack each other up. ENTP and ENFJ can definitely have sort of like a mutual off for each other's sense of humor. But when one of the two makes a joke, the other will instantly get it and it will instantly be really funny to them and vice versa. Potential problem areas for these two is that ENFJ is going to get pissed off at ENTP for being so open-ended and clueless because oh, the ENTP is never going to understand time very well. They're just off in the space-time continuum conundrum all the time. Like that's where ENTP lives. ENFJ doesn't live there. ENFJ lives in linear time. ENFJ made the map of linear time. Uh, ENFJ likes to have a plan, likes to stick to a plan. They would usually prefer other people to make the plan. Oh, actually, that's almost exclusively. Sometimes even if ENFJ wants to make the plan, it's better if they don't. ENFJs can get really stressed out if they have to plan events or if things don't go according to plan, where ENTPs can roll with it. Obviously, they're rolling with it all the way, you know, 17 minutes late to ENFJ's house or whatever, and ENFJ is pissed. But they're, they're both pretty stubborn, I would say, which is kind of fascinating because they really are, they're people pleasers, and honestly, so are ENTPs. They're both people pleasers. But when it comes to pleasing each other, they're not so much. It's like they check out of people pleaser syndrome for each other a lot of the time and then they kind of at each other instead. Oh, and then another problem that ENFJs and ENFTPs can have, or with any extroverted pairing, you know, as friends, co-workers, a romantic, is that you have two extroverts and they're both used to doing the talking. If one or both don't know how to listen very well, then you're going to end up with somebody or both people feeling unheard. One of them's gonna feel like the other one keeps jumping in and doesn't let them talk or doesn't care. And that's a problem a lot of the time with extroverts, especially extroverts that haven't really realized that listening is a good thing too. Uh, so a lot of the time that's why introvert and extrovert go so well together because the introvert doesn't mind you as much when the extrovert just babbles on, you know, because sometimes the extrovert just needs to do that and sometimes the introvert just wants to listen. Uh, if you have two that have learned how to do the give and take, uh, then it's really cool because I have, you know, I've got some ENF, I won't even say who's ENFJs, but um, when you're good at the give and take, then e ENFJ and e ENTP can have a good time together. ENTP is going to be more blunt about almost everything. ENFJ is going to approach things, you know, got a kid glove. They are going to beat around the bush a lot more or kind of take other routes to say things, say the truth. The ENFJ is also going to sometimes not tell the truth at all to somebody because they don't want to hurt their feelings. And an unhealthy ENFJ won't, won't even tell the truth to themselves. They will completely blind themselves to the truth if it's, har if it's hurtful or harmful. Uh, ENFJs don't like confrontation at all, you know, and ENTPs want to get everything out and talk about it. ENFJ wants to ignore it, pretend nothing ever happened and not resolve anything a lot of the time. Oh, and then ENTP's like, ah, you know, we just need to talk about this. Stop ignoring me. Fine, I'm gonna ignore you back. So that doesn't work very well. A lot of the times, little disagreements can be worked out, especially if the ENFJ is willing to forgive and let go. 
the ENFJ is also a really good grudge holder. I read that there are a couple types that will like throw down the gauntlet like for romantic interests, like I am going to make this difficult for you, you know, I am going to throw down a series of challenges and I'm gonna see if you pass. I believe ENFJ is one of those. INFP is another one of those. They can make excellent lose-lose situation makers because you you apologize, you get it done with, but the ENFJ hasn't let go of it. No, and I had to read about this in a relationship book. I had to read that I was doing this like to guys that I've dated before, creating lose-lose situations. And that means that if you get over something, then one person hangs on. So you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. And if you create a situation like that, then you know the other person's never gonna wanna apologize or put in the effort to make up or whatever because they know that you're not gonna get over get, being mad. So ENFJ is that after you resolve something, chuck that shit in the past, you know, bury that dead horse and move on, cut your tether. And so these two sometimes will try to make each other happy. Um, ENTP will just try to, you know, shake up the ENFJ and think of all the ways that they can be happy again. ENFJ will think that they know what's best for ENTP. ENFJs, they're really good at getting stories out of people, but they are not going to divulge about themselves if it's personal. They might tell you about their days, they might tell you about somebody else's day, somebody else's life. They're going to tell fascinating stories and be so fun to listen to. Like ENFJs are some of the best speakers, I think, orator. At least I've met a few, and one uh, is actually my mom. She is the best storyteller I know. They can make the most boring things sound so funny or so fun. ENFJs are no notorious for not spilling personal details about themselves and sometimes they even want to but you have to ask with an ENFJ you have to know that you're going to need to ask them uh, especially if it's things of a more personal matter because they want you to ask them but you're not going to know that unless you know them and even then sometimes you're going to have to dig a little and ENFJ is also going to a lot of the time feel uncomfortable talking about those things and so even if they do spill a little bit they might clam up or they might be like oh my gosh I said too much and then try to change the subject and so it's almost like you have to make it okay you have to say it's okay that it's about you it's okay let's talk about it just spill your guts things that have to do with deep feelings inside that's I think there's something scary about letting other people in that close or maybe even saying it out loud uh, because it makes it more real even to them. I think that ENFJs can be really guarded when it comes to their very personal feelings. Sometimes they'll be more hesitant to give their opinion. Some are gonna tell you straight out. <laughs> Some are just gonna be like, this is how I think. Good luck convincing them otherwise too. It can be done. And a lot of the times if they make up their mind about something, it is like unetching the stone. I was trying to think of why, although, ENFJ and ENTP are both people pleasers. It's not so much directed toward each other a lot of the time. I think it's because the ENFJ's usual methods don't really work on the ENTP. Some ENFJs, if they want to, are masters of the guilt trip. Most of the time, for most people, it's going to work. ENTPs really do like to do things for people. It makes them really happy, but if you make a an ENTP feel guilty, like they should be doing something out of guilt, ENTP is just going to get pissed off. You know, ENTPs do not like doing things because they feel beholden. ENTPs don't generally feel beholden. So if you continue to try to employ guilt trips on an ENTP, most likely sooner or later they're going to write you off unless they're related to you. Because you know, that's that's not how they get down. They just like to do things because they like to do them. Um, but as soon as it becomes about owing or should or something like that, the ENTP is either just not going to do it or if they do it, then all of the joy will be gone from it. It's either going to be grudgingly or if not grudgingly, it's just going to suck. Whereas if it wasn't with that feeling attached to it, then they would have enjoyed doing it most likely. Or at least the other person being happy would have made them happy, even if they didn't like doing the actual task. ENFJ tricks. Uh, they do have some tricks. It, they don't work very well on ENTP, and ENTP is just going to be resentful that 
e ENFJ tried to use that and then ENFJ is going to be resentful back because the ENTP doesn't speak that language and it doesn't make a lot of sense to the ENFJ why it doesn't work and I don't even think a lot of the time the ENFJ sees it as like a guilt or a manipulation you know it's like for somebody's own good probably a lot of NTs are going to be fairly impervious to any kind of coercion or guilt and that's not to say I'm impervious we have Norwegian guilt in my family and it is a thing. It is a force of its own and it is practically tangible. And then my mother is an ENFJ on top of it. Uh, there was a long time where just the disappointed look of my mother would be enough to ruin my life. <laughs> uh, and it still is to some degree, honestly. If you have an ENFJ and an ENTP and they're both females, often you'll run the risk of some form of competition going on and it probably comes down to the ENTP whether she's gonna take the challenge you know play the game or just be like uh, uh you win that it's fairly likely that the ENTP will get sucked into the game without realizing it and then all of a sudden she'll realize that there's this like thing going on and then she'll be like what the heck and then she'll just cross her arms and she'll just forfeit or whatever so she just won't play anymore and I think this is because ENFJs, especially if they're feeling a little unsure of themselves, uh, do this thing where they're kind of constantly measuring themselves against, you know, people around them. Or if they are feeling super awesome about themselves, I don't even think they'll think about that. You know, it won't even be in the cards, it'll just be all love and building each other up. But if the ENFJ is feeling a little bit unsure for whatever reason, there's a chance that there's going to be this competitive vibe. And I wish they wouldn't because ENFJs, you have so much to offer and you're such amazing people and you should just do you. You don't need to measure yourself against anyone else. ENFJs, your words are your most powerful things that you own. And you can use your words to literally bring, you can walk into a room and light it up. You can make someone's entire day with the way that you know how to bring people up. You have, all of you have the potential to do so much good in the world. Uh, ENFJs with great power comes great responsibility.